Well, today, uh, we really wanted y'all to hear what God did among those youth and those young people last week at, at our Surge Youth Camp. It, it absolutely was a terrific camp. I had around 93 campers, somewhere around there, I think, was the final camp. And of course, the counselors and, and all of those that helped were probably up in the neighborhood of 115, 120. And uh, God certainly did use Jonathan Moore, who has been the camp pastor for our camp. Uh, Jonathan and Lisa have led the praise and worship in our services each night uh, for the last, how many years has it been, 13 or 12? 13? They have led our praise and worship out for the last 12 out of the 13 years that we've been having the camp. And the last three years, Jonathan has been our pastor. And Jonathan just has such a great way of communicating the gospel uh, to young folks and uh, just knows how to connect them in and uh, had several decisions I think somewhere around five maybe half a dozen decisions something like that uh, for Christ this week and we just thank the Lord for that but we want to give our young people that participated in that uh, just an opportunity to share with you this week about camp Laura you going to start and just kind of uh, I thought Laura, Laura, of course, has been the director of our camp. Her and Deborah Adams, actually, over the last, ever since we started the camp. Uh, this is the first year Deborah had to kind of step away this year uh, because of some health issues that she's been dealing with. And, and so uh, Laura, of course, um, led our camp this year. And I uh, thought Laura would come and just tell you a little bit about what the activities and the things we did throughout the week this year. So. We did have six salvations and numerous rededications this year of course um, I'm just going to give you an overview I know y'all kind of got a plan on what you're going to speak and stuff like that I'll kind of tell you some of the things we did so that when they're speaking you'll know what, what they're talking about we started of course Monday afternoon and on Tuesday morning we did mission activities we had the students broken up into seven different groups um, several of them stayed on campus at Brent Parker doing yard work painting benches and painting other types of things around campus very visible signs of improvement um, some other groups went to what's called the Dream Center in Vidalia. I know y'all have heard us mention that a number of times. It's a women's addiction recovery center. And they did yard work and all types of things like that, just do, doing basic improvements. And then still another group went to the nursing homes in the area and broke out in that way. On um, Tuesday afternoon, we did an amazing race, which if, if any of you are familiar with the television show, The Amazing Race, I, it's just fun to me fun of adventure and they basically raced all over campus and had to get clues from different things and just do all kinds of different sorts of things like that. Wednesday morning again we did our mission activities. We broke out into those type of things. Um, Thursday we did an entire what you would call a ropes course basically. It's team interactive, team building things that all relate back to Christ and just true living examples of how you can you know, sometimes you can read stuff and read stuff and read stuff, but until you actually do it or stuff like that, it's really a great way to remember and interact with things that you've done and things like that. And then, of course, Friday we had our wrap-up with our video and all that type of stuff. But we truly had a great week, did some amazing things. Um, God was good to us, and I can't thank each of you enough that helped provide scholarships and some things like that to help some of these campers go. Because, y'all, I think you'll see in a few minutes, lives were changed. They always are, and, and God is just amazing. And he did some wonderful things last week. How do y'all want to do it? Y'all just going to come up one at a time? Okay. Come on. Y'all have a plan. Let the preacher go away. <laughs> I mean, you can sit up here if you have know, moral support. You can see your face. Oh. <laughs> um, okay. So, like Ms. Laura said, it, it, we had a really great week at camp, and there was a lot of people at camp, and it was really fun. And, yeah, that's all I'm saying. I'm just kidding. Um... Nervous up here. You know? when, you, when you're down there and you're thinking about what you're going to say, and you get up here and it's just. <laughs> yeah, okay, anyway. So, um, Jonathan Moore was our camp pastor, as he has been for the last couple years. And he always does a great job, but this year he talked about, um, since our theme was stand, he kind of talked about, you know, you have to take a stand for Jesus. And if you're not willing to take a stand for Jesus, then who's going to take a stand? And um, as many of you know, I went to the Glitz of the Truth group, and we did some of our skits. And they were asking us to kind of tie a stand in with our skits, because usually we don't. We just, you know. 
So, um, and uh, one of the skits was uh, God's Chisel, which uh, some of y'all have seen and some of y'all haven't. And basically it's talking about how God works in your life and takes away the stuff that you don't need to make you a better Christian. And, um, it kind of made me think that, you know, even if you feel like God is still working on you, you can still, you can still, you can still take a stand and show other people that, you know, even though you're a work in progress, people can, it's better for them to see you broken down and someone just standing there, you know, I'm for Jesus, woohoo. But if they see you broken down, they can relate to you more because people struggle. Even if, you know, some people are like, no, no, I'm fine, I'm fine. People struggle, whether you see it or not. And if they see you struggling and still living for Jesus, it's better. Um, it makes them feel that, you know, maybe I don't have to be perfect to live for God. Maybe I can live for God and still mess up because... Everyone messes up, and Jesus Jesus doesn't want perfect people. Because if you're perfect, you can't relate to somebody that's not perfect. So what's your point? You're just standing there, oh, I'm perfect, woo -hoo. But if you're not perfect, you can go over here to this person and say, you know, I've been where you're, you are, and I can help you through it. And that is not my plan for today, so that was also Jesus' message. <laughs> and so, but what are the things that did stick with me? <sighs> what are the things that did stick with me? Um, everybody knows John 3.16, because it's one of the most popular Bible verses ever. Even non-believers know it. And something I learned, Jonathan said, um, the Greek word for believing that, you know, it says, for God so loved the world that he sent his only son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. And that Greek word for believe is, please pronounce it, pestuo. She told me to say pistol duo, and I said, I get up here and say that. Anyway, pestuo, and it's basically the meaning of that word is to believe so much that there's a change in your life, that people, a noticeable change. Not just saying, oh, I believe in Jesus, you know, and going about your life. It's a radical change where you, it's like, you know, people say you're walking this way and you turn around and go the complete opposite direction. And that's what kind of change God wants. And, you know, of course you're going to fall back sometimes and that's okay because God's still right there with you to pick you back up and bring you back into his arms. Okay, I'm good. Yeah. That was your sermon. Rebecca was my roommate this week, and I guess we kind of rubbed off on each other, so that can be a good thing or a bad thing, depending on how you look at it. So our theme this week was sand, as you can see from the shirts that all of us are wearing, and our verse this week was 1 Corinthians 15, 58, and it says, Stand firm. Let nothing move you. Always give yourselves fully to the work of the Lord. So, of course, as Mr. Carl said and Ms. Laura said, we had the band Moore this week, which is Jonathan and Lisa Moore. And Jonathan Moore was our camp pastor, and he always does just a phenomenal job with that. And this week, he, he centered around standing for God. And I got kind of a few things from his messages, and I thought that he just, this kind of blew every other camp I've been to out of the water just because of his messages. The first thing I got is that we should be we should reject being passive because we should not be passive in our faith. He said that real leaders are not passive, and all of us, whether we realize it or not, hold a leadership position in some way, shape, or form, whether it be school, work, family, church. We are a leader in some way, shape, or form. And he also pointed out that if you stand for nothing, you will fall for anything. And as Christians, we should stand for God because, as Rebecca said, if we don't stand for God, who's going to? And he also said, and this just kind of stuck with me, about being used and letting God using, letting God use you. He said, God, if you can use anything, use me. And I think that we should all have that attitude that God should use us in whatever way, shape, or form he wants to. And another thing he brought up was something called fine-sounding arguments. His explanation of fine-sounding arguments was arguments that people make up that are not scriptural, but sound so believable that people, even in the faith, will believe it. 
And we should be so firmly rooted in our faith that we do not believe those fine-sounding arguments and that we are based so heavily in Scripture that nothing can move us. And uh, in our culture, he also noted that somebody has said, or many people say, there is no absolute truth, which in that is an oxymoron in itself, which I find kind of amusing. So, and he also said that a true believer will hate their sin and they will not want to sin. And that kind of brings me to the Greek word that Rebecca was just talking about, the suo, of course, which is to believe in such a way that causes life change. When we have a relationship with Jesus, our lives should change so dramatically that you can see a difference of us living for God and not living for God. You should see us living for God and creating an example for those new believers in the faith. And our relationship with Jesus should cause our life to change. And Jonathan just used an example of discipleship that kind of really, it was just kind of eye-opening for me. He brought up two campers. Can I do this right now? Um, Bradley, you come up here. Um, Rebecca, you come up here. Okay, this, uh, I've never, I haven't done this before, so let's see how this is going to work. Okay, Riley is going to be the person who just goes out one by one, and she basically gets people saved, but she just leaves it at that. She doesn't try to disciple them or keep them further. Riley, you're the one person. Now, this is Rebecca, and Rebecca is one of the people that she leads them to God, and that she disciples them in the faith and helps them to grow. As Rebecca does that, she pours out of herself and with the people that she is basically leading to God. And in that way, they go by themselves, and they can reach more people. So, Rebecca, here you are, somebody. Come on, reach up. <laughs>
she was a Christian living in China, and since China is a communist nation, she ended up being arrested, thrown into prison, and tortured. So the um, people gave her a chance to get out of prison by asking her to sign a document, which it was non-Christian, and but she never signed it and took a stand for Christ. But in the end, we all need to be ready to stand up for Christ because it could happen today, anytime. So thank y'all. My name is Brittany Ray. This is my third year at camp, and it was a great week. We had amazing counselors, and we had just a great time with a lot of different activities that were very hot, very tiring, and made us very sweat, but we were all good. And as you can probably tell by now, Jonathan was a pretty cool dude, okay? And in his sermon, one of the things that stood out to me was he said to reject passivity. Now, the definition of passivity is not participating readily or actively. Act actively. In other words, inactive. If you're inactive, then someone else has to lead. What they may be leading you into might not be what God wants for you. Which is why we need to take a stand. Our theme verse for this week was 1 Corinthians 15, 58. And y'all have already heard this, but I'm say it again. Which says, Therefore, my dear brothers, stand firm. Let nothing move you. Always give yourselves fully to the work of the Lord. Because you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. So you see, it says in this verse that we need to stand firm. We weren't made to be passive. We were made to give ourselves fully to the work of the Lord. So like Jonathan said, we need to reject passivity so we can stand up for what we believe in and stand firm when we serve Him. I thought I would share this from camp because I never thought about the idea of passivity. But it's everywhere. Everyone wants to follow the latest trend or do what everybody else is doing. And not start one. Everyone follows, but really we need to lead. I never thought about passivity in church, but as Christians, especially youth, because I mean, I'm telling you, some of them will fall for anything. We do need to reject it when it comes to standing up for Jesus in front of others. We set the example whether we want to or not. We do influence the ones around us, and others should see Jesus when they see us. Thank y'all. speech so just bear with me. <laughs> this was my first year at Surge Youth Camp. We had a great speaker. His name was Jonathan Moore. Jonathan is, and his wife Lisa led us into worship with some great music every night. Every night he spoke, I think everybody was really inspired by what he said. We could really relate to him because he had some of the same experiences we had we have right now or at the age we're at. Um, I think all the campers had a great time this year. The first two mornings we had missions. The first morning we went to the Dream Center in Valdea, which is a rehab program for women. We raked leaves off of their dirt road and put the leaves in trash bags. The, lady, the ladies hauled the bags off to the dump. We took about three U-turns before we could find the center. <laughs> <laughs> the ladies were thankful for the work we did. The second morning we worked outside at the college. We were trimming the bushes and raking up the leaves. The next few days we had team building activities. During that time we basically created our own version of the TV show, The Amazing Race. I think I sweated off two, rant, two pounds running the whole time. <laughs> the next day we went to the gym and the pool. We had an awesome time. Many things happened during that week. People were clotheslined. I, had a, I chased a runner down the street. And a teacher at the campus got hit in the head with a football. <laughs> we had so much fun this year, and I can't wait to go back. How's it going today? I'm AJ. 
Josh come over. This is my first time in this church, and I'm, I'm so glad for actually be able to come to this church. But this is actually my seventh year in this church. I've been here a while. Boom. The Lord, excuse me. But if I don't want my parents to do I'm just going to tell y'all. Get out of here. You? Uh, <clears throat> Becca said that everybody goes through struggles in their life. I go through them every day. This thing represents salvation. These beads represent salvation. The gold stands for heaven. The black stands for sin. The red stands for Jesus' blood. The white stands for purity. And the green stands for spiritual growth. <clears throat> Pastor must have had a lot going on in my life. It made me question God. Like, why could He do this to me? Why did this happen to me? But I just went, I just went through my head that, like, He gives His toughest battles to His strongest souls. He wouldn't put me through this if I could get through it. But, <clears throat> I just knew that. If you believe in God, nothing can go wrong. When you know He's on your side, nothing can get any better. You know? So this whole week, I've told his little kids that no matter what, no matter where you go in life, God's always going to be on your side. So as you leave camp, make sure that your salvation will stick with you. <laughs> Thank you. Savior, the center of our of our universe, the, the life that 
that we live to be all centered around Him. And to be willing that no matter the cost, that we would take a stand. And so uh, I just want to just read this verse uh, that came to my heart as I thought about that this week. Is uh, Jesus says in John 16, 33, These things I have spoken to you so that in me you may have peace. In the world you have tribulation, but take courage, I have overcome the world. Jesus promises that when we stand for Him, He will be with us. That was the promise He gave to His disciples when He left this world. He said, go make disciples and I will be with you always. Jesus will never abandon us. He will never forsake us. As we, as we talked about those testimonies of... Uh, like Riley shared the testimony of um, the video of the girl who, who suffered tremendously, but yet she wouldn't yield to temptation. She, she stuck in there and took a stand for Christ. Um, and she was able to bear witness for Him. Jesus says, I've overcome the world. Don't, don't be afraid uh, to take a stand for me. And so, so I just want to say, uh, challenge all of us today, myself included, that... Uh, that we be courageous and be be unashamed. Don't worry about what people are going to say about us. Don't worry about how foolish we may look in this world for making Christ number one. But as these students, and I just want to say students, I'm proud of you and I'm proud to see what, what God has done in your life this week. And uh, it, it's been great to, to watch Him work in your heart. Uh, and it's been a blessing uh, to know for y'all and, and, and leaders. And I just want to say thank you to everyone who, uh, as a leader, you you spent all that time uh, sharing with them, pouring your life into them, and, uh, giving up your sleep, giving up your energy and your time uh, to serve Christ. I just want to say on behalf of, of the church, thank you uh, for that. that we, we really appreciate that. And for those who... Who, who served in prayer in your homes this week for camp. Uh, we do want to say thank you uh, so much because that prayer uh, is, is more, even more important in some ways than, than your feet being there, uh, being present. That prayer is so important. So we thank you for that. some to be evangelists, some to be pastors and teachers, to prepare God's people for works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature, attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. Then we will no longer be infants tossed back and forth by the waves and blown here and there by every wind of teaching and by the cunning and craftiness of men in their deceitful scheming. Instead, speaking the truth in love, we will in all things grow up into Him who is the head, that is Christ. It is He who gave some to be apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. I want you all to know this morning that right here in this group among us, and Dave and I have talked about this on a few occasions just this past week, We've got God raising up leaders here. Raising up leaders in our churches. You know, some of these will one day be the pastors of our churches. They will be our Sunday school teachers. They will be our Awana teachers. They will be, like Riley and like Town, in a few more years, they'll be the leaders in our youth group. You know, God is raising them up already to be part of building up the body of Christ. Uh... You know, many of them this week, I think really God spoke to them about taking a stand. And, and y'all know, as it said in the scripture, I said, you know, as we all reach unity of faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature, each and every one of these young people on the road to growing and maturing spiritually. And it says, then we will no longer be infants tossed back and forth by the waves and by the wind. Because they will be standing firmly rooted in their faith and in their relationship with Jesus Christ. And y'all know what our young people face nowadays. 
I mean, it seems like each and every as time goes on, it gets worse and worse and worse. And if they ever need anything now, they need to have that firm grip and that firm stand in Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. Each night after the worship service, uh, we broke out into uh, just little breakout groups just to discuss further the message and what John had brought to us through God's Word. And uh, one of the nights, I don't remember if it was Wednesday or Thursday night, but um, and one of the young people kind of alluded to this just a minute ago. I believe it was Lauren. But one of the statements that came to my mind as Jonathan was speaking that night is to believe in Christ means that we are willing to be a changed person. Let me say that again. To believe in Christ means we are willing to be a changed person. You know, the church has always been great through the years about, you know, trying to get people saved and getting them baptized. And y'all have heard me say before, but in many ways the church has failed because that's where it stopped, after the baptism. We have not, as a church, as a body of Christ, been good about discipling and teaching people how to grow in their faith. And we have an awesome responsibility to do that. And you see before you this morning young people who are now not only willing to enter into a relationship with Jesus Christ, but they're willing to be disciples, followers of Christ, growing spiritually and in their relationship with Him. And that's what it's all about. They want to be changed people in their schools and in their neighborhoods and in their communities. And folks, I believe that if there's ever going to be a revival in our community and in our nation and even in our world, I don't, I don't believe really it's going to be of our age group. You know where I believe it's going to start? It's going to start right here. It's going to start right here. So this morning, as we have this moment of invitation, what's our invitation? 605. Living for Jesus. A life that is true. That's what our young people have heard this week in camp. Living a life that reflects Jesus, a changed life in Jesus. This morning, this is the opportunity for you to respond. If you do not know Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, you want to say for the first time today, I want Him and through His Holy Spirit to, to make residence in my heart and my life, and I want to become a disciple, a follower of Jesus Christ. I want to begin growing in a relationship with Him and be a changed person. <coughs> If that's you this morning, you come as we stand and sing. If you would just like prayer, I would love to pray for you this morning. Whatever struggles, whatever you may be dealing with, something specific in your life, I would love to pray for you this morning. So as we stand together, 605, you come as the Lord leads you.